we are now going to look at pipeline forwarding and how this can be used in order to address the problem of data hazards. So what's a data hazard? Let's take an example. Here I've shown a sequence of five instructions. The first is a subtract. And the important thing to note over here is that the output of the subtract is written into the register x2. Now, each of the next four instructions, the AND operation, the OR operation, the ADD operation, as well as the STORE, make use of this value of x2. And keeping in mind that we normally expect the instructions to be executed sequentially one after the other, clearly the intention over here is that the AND operation should use the newly computed value of x2, not any old value that might have been present in the register x2. In other words, we need to make sure that whatever is the result of the subtract is what is used as input to the AND operation and so on. In particular, what we can see is that the last four instructions depend on the value that was generated by the first instruction. Now let's take a look at the different stages through which the subtract, the first instruction would go. In the first cycle, we would be in the instruction fetch stage where we would fetch the operation, the subtract instruction from the IMEP. In the second clock cycle, the register values that are required for the subtraction would be read out of the register file. This would be the instruction decode stage. The third clock cycle would be the execution stage where the ALU would come into action and would actually perform the subtract operation. In the fourth stage, which would normally be for reading or writing memory, we do not have anything to do since this is an ALU operation. So the output that was generated by the ALU just passes from one pipeline stage to the next. And finally, in the last fifth or write back stage, the value that was computed in the EX stage is now written into the register file. What this means is that the last stage is where the register file is actually updated. On the other hand, the value that we wanted was actually already computed in the EX stage. And it, in principle, is already available for future computations. The question is, how can we use that? Because otherwise, if we do not find some way to make use of the fact that the value is already available in the EX stage, clearly the second AND operation has to wait all the way until we reach the write back stage and the value of the subtract is written into a register before it can then read it out and make use of it. Is this really necessary? Let's take a look at the detailed pipeline diagram with the other instructions as well to find out. This is a more detailed pipeline diagram. And over here, what we can see is the x-axis essentially shows time and clock cycles. We have CC1, CC2, and so on. And the value of the register X2 has also been shown, assuming that it was originally 10, but after the subtract operation becomes minus 20. This is just a set of illustrative values. You don't really need to worry about the values. All that you need to care about is when does the value in the register actually change? And as you can see over here, the value in the register itself is changed only in clock cycle five. That is during the write back stage of the subtract operation. Clearly this is a problem because the AND operation now requires what looks like an anti-causal read. That is the value which is written into the register in cycle five is required by the AND operation in cycle three. Similarly, the next OR operation also has an anti-causal dependence. On the other hand, in principle, at least the third instruction, that is the ADD x14, x2, x2, this is all right because of the read after write semantics of the register. And the subsequent store operation, of course, is not a problem at all because the value has already been updated to the register and would be read out appropriately by the store instruction. So the problem that we seem to face is only with respect to the first two, that is the AND and the OR instruction, which require the register value before the register has been updated. But keep in mind that the computation of the value has already happened in cycle three. And the AND operation only needs to read out the value of the register in cycle three. It's going to make use of it only in cycle four. Given the fact that once the value is computed in cycle three, it is then going to get written into the pipeline register between 
the execute and mem stages the question becomes can we now pull that value out of that ex mem register and use it as an input to the alu rather than waiting for the input to the alu to come from the register itself this is of course doable and this diagram over here shows roughly what the data flow would be like if we chose to do that as you can see over here the important point is this ex mem register is used in order to forward a value directly into the input of the alu for the and operation and similarly in the next clock cycle the same data would be in the mem wb register and is used in order to forward data to the third instruction the or operation subsequent instructions don't have the problem because after all whatever is written into the register can then be read out and we go back to the regular operation of the pipeline the question is how can we implement these two pieces of logic that is to say when we need to do this forwarding can we get the data directly from the one of the pipeline registers rather than waiting for it to go into the actual register file of the cpu this is actually fairly straightforward if you think about it and we will look at roughly how the logic could be implemented based on the different control signals that we already are familiar with so first just a close up view of the data path without forwarding this is what it would look like the if id stage would have the register file being read out going through the id ex register into the alu the output of the alu goes through the ex mem register possibly to data memory if needed and then we have the mem wb registers with a mux and finally the data going back to the register file if we want to add forwarding logic essentially what we need is there has to be some input coming not only from the id ex register which are the values of rs1 rs2 and rd or rs1 and rs2 primarily we will also need to get some information from the ex mem register as well as from the mem wb register in particular the signals that we are interested in are going to be the destination registers in the ex mem stage and the mem wb stage why is this important because the register rd in the ex mem stage is actually telling us where the output of the alu that was computed in the previous clock cycle is going to be updated in the register file that is to say in the previous clock cycle the alu performed some operation whose output has now been stored in the ex mem register and eventually needs to go into a register in the register file where in the register file is it going to go it's going into the register pointed to by ex mem dot register rd that is the destination register address which is being propagated along with the instruction all the way till the write back stage when it will actually perform the write back so if we can now take a look at that register rd from the ex mem stage and compare it with rs1 and rs2 of the execution stage it's easy for us to determine whether or not the present instruction in the execution stage required data that was supposed to come from one of the registers updated by the previous instruction in which case we can perform the forwarding the forwarding unit just has to take an appropriate forward a signal and if necessary it will just take the value from the ex mem stage and send it directly through into the alu let's see what this logic for this would look like if written in a language like verilog what we are discussing here is something called an execution hazard that is an ex hazard in other words what we need is the result from the immediate previous instruction that just completed the execution stage this is exactly the same as the scenario where we first have a subtract followed by the and operation since we know that the output of the subtract is required for the and operation we have to check a few things when we are in the process of executing the and operation that is to say we have now reached the 
we are trying to find out what the logic for the forward A or forward B signal corresponding to the diagram that we just saw in the previous slide looks like. And what we are checking is, did the previous instruction have something which is going to update the register file? Clearly it has not yet updated it because the previous instruction has not yet reached the write back stage. But if it was going to update the register file, then the exmem.regwrite would be equal to one. That's the first condition we need to check. On top of that, the next thing that we would need to look for is a special case. Is the destination register equal to zero? If so, then we don't need to bother because we know that destination zero can never be updated. The third condition is, does the destination register for the previous instruction match the RS1 source for our present instruction? If so, set forward A equal to one zero. Why one zero? This is once again, just a choice. It's one of the multiplexer inputs that causes it to select the value from the EX mem register and send it to the ALU. So the MUX will select the data from the EXMEM pipeline register and forward it directly into the ALU rather than taking the value that came from the register file. Now this takes care of the EX hazard. That is to say the case where the subtract is immediately followed by the AND operation. What about instructions from two cycles earlier? Let's say that we need a result from two steps previous. In our case, that example would be between the subtract and the OR operation, which is the third instruction in our list. Now in this case, when the OR operation reaches the execute stage, the subtract operation would actually have reached write back. It has not yet completed writing into the register. The subtract operations output would now be in the memwb register. So what we need to check is, whether the reg write in the memwb pipeline register is equal to one. If so, the two previous instruction is going to update the register file and po possibly this might be a value that we need. Once again, check for the special case of X zero. And if it is not zero, check whether that destination register corresponding to the memwb matches our source register that we require for the execution in the present cycle. If so, Set forward A to 0, 1. In this case, the 0, 1 is another choice that we have, which basically selects from the memwb pipeline register instead of the exmem pipeline register that we had earlier. Now, if neither of those conditions is true, it means that we pretty much need to just get the value from the regular register file, and we would probably just set the value of forward A equal to 0, 0. That would be the default, whereby the values come from the register file and proceed as required. Now, all of this has been described for the forward A signal, where we check for RS1. Similarly, we could also generate a forward B signal to check for RS2. Since we don't know whether the value of the register that we need is required for source one or source two, or indeed for both. Because after all, we could have a situation where, let's say X2 is added to X2 as one instruction. In which case, both the values might need to be forwarded from the same register. That can also be handled since after all, this is fairly simple logic that we are implementing to find out which way to proceed. A couple of things to be careful about. Supposing we have a situation where both instruction n minus one and instruction n minus two update the register file. That is both the immediate previous instruction and the instruction before that are going to update the register file. We need to be careful which result should we use, of course, the immediate previous one, because that is the latest in the chronological sequence. How do we take care of this? It's pretty much a question of applying a priority. That is to say, the most recent result, that is the EXMEM register, is the one that wins. We would first check the EXMEM result, and based on that, decide whether or not to look at the MEMWB register. There's one additional extra piece of logic that we need to take care of, which is mentioned in the textbook. What if we have an immediate operand? Immediate operands are generated as part of the present instruction itself. Now, in this case, we need to have 
an additional override in the IDEX stage, which makes sure that immediate operands are taken directly from the instruction and sent to the ALU and effectively overrides any other logic that we might be implementing for forwarding. So to summarize, the forwarding implementation would look something like this. We have already seen what the control signals would look like and how they need to be sent from one stage to the next. In addition to that, we would also have a forwarding unit that has been physically drawn over here as being in the EX stage, but is actually logically taking inputs from multiple stages. It's taking inputs from the IDEX register, the EX mem register, and the memwb register, and generating an appropriate control signal that determines functionality in the EX stage. In this way, forwarding ALU outputs can be accomplished and effectively there will be no need for any dead cycles or wastage of clock cycles in the implementation of ALU operations, even if one depends on something that was being computed in the previous immediate instruction.